is Daim Shabazz and we're at the World Open Chess Championship and the tournament is over. Uh, Gadakomsky uh, won the tournament. Uh, he beat Vladim Milov in a tiebreak bliss match. And I'm sitting with uh, Emery Tate who actually got his third uh, IM title uh, in this tournament and I'd like to ask Emery uh, in, in terms of your reflections of the tournament. Wow, <laughs> the reflections. Well, it's just over. Um, the largest prize fund ever for a uh, World Open. The competition was extremely uh, tough. Um, a lot of people showed up. Uh, I would say that, uh, frankly, I wish some of the top players in the world were here, or so-called world, because they play in their small tournaments and they don't get to play in the open fashion. So I wish they were here so they uh, could take uh, some lessons or give some lessons. It would have been very, very interesting. But failing that, I can say that uh, the tournament went well without them and uh, very high standard of play. That's really what I've impresses me most is the high standard of play. You ended up with uh, how many points, Emory? Six out of nine. Six out of nine. And uh, that was uh, how close were you to the GM, Norm? I don't know, but I think time will tell. Uh, if I didn't make the GM norm with the six, six and a half might have done. I, I lost a tragic game uh, against Alexander Ivanov when I misplayed the position completely. Uh, and the middle game position was winnable. However, um, I also made another uh, error or two. So uh, the GM norm was well within my grasp. But uh, in this case, you know, getting my AM title is uh, it's, it's overshadowed any negative feeling. I think a lot of people would, would say that um, you have had at least the strength for uh, many, many years, and now this just makes it official. What were some of your best games that you played in the tournament? Oh, nice. Um, well, actually, I'll be honest. I, I played a very high standard. Um, and when you say best, that's hard to define. What I, Im, impacts me really now, having made uh, my result, is that uh, only yesterday, for instance, I lost both my games. And it was just a zero day. I mean, there was no reason even to show up. I, I could have simply slept and forfeited both games <laughs> because I lost them both. And I lost to Alex Wojcikowicz. He played like a madman, possessed. He played in the style of tall, and I lost a tactical struggle, which is unusual for me. Uh, and it's unusual for Wojcikowicz to lash out with such fury. As it turns out, he sacrificed several pawns and... Uh, I wasn't able to defend. Uh, and analysis proves it was quite sound. Mm. Um, as, it, as it turns out, uh, in that evening round, I played Alexander Ivanov, and achieving a very good position. At first I thought overconfidence killed me, but it wasn't overconfidence. I think it was fatigue. Uh, Twelve hours a day of playing is, is too much to ask. So the American standard got me. It was my first time playing two games in a day. Prior to that, I was three out of four. The three out of four was only one game a day, and but on the two out of I lost both games on two two, two, two out of four uh, two two games a day schedule. Excuse me. So as it turns out, as it turns out, uh, when you ask me the question which game in, stands out of my mind, it was after losing two games. I played uh, the black pieces, and I knew I had to really just as we say in the business, I had to stop the bleeding, and uh, to beat uh, a very talented young man named uh, Jake Kleiman, to beat him. Uh, with the black pieces, especially in the fashion that I beat him, uh, generating a virtual mating attack, uh, generating a mating attack, and he had to cough up pawns, and he went down in flames. To generate that mating attack with the black pieces was not only satisfying, but it was really intrinsic to my efforts. And uh, had I not done that, uh, we wouldn't be having this interview, per se, etc., etc., etc. You also beat Laurent uh, Fresnay of, of France. Uh, you beat yes. him. And, and that effort was uh, very impressive. I was impressed with my style and skills. Uh, yet, on the other hand, your prior question said, you know, it's, it's odd that beating uh, Kleiman would overshadow that. But beating Kleiman was more a, a test of character as opposed to a test of skill. I think we've alluded to the fact earlier that my skill's never been in question. And people have questioned other factors. But having lost both games yesterday, that was, um, and to come back and beat Kleiman this morning with Black the way I did, that proved character, and it overshadowed beating Fresnay. For for instance, I mean, I mean, I mean, after all, that is, after all, 
he's a, a relatively young grandmaster, and he had no idea who he was really playing. And so when I when I when I dominated him the way I did, it, it came as a complete shock to him. But I dare say, no one else was surprised. I believe he, when like you said, uh, he had gone through your games and the da databases, so he probably knew that um, you, you had the, the capability of, of actually beating him. Actually, you know, I, I, I demur. I, I don't think, I didn't, I didn't get that from him at all. I, I, I get from him that he was a, a young uh, superstar, and uh, I don't think losing was ever on his agenda. I don't think losing was in his uh, world view. It was just something that he has to cope with now in, in the aftermath. So, in terms of your uh, future plans in chess, uh, what, are, what are your uh, aspirations and what do you plan to do from here? Frankly, you know, at 47, uh, as we say, I'm no, I'm no longer a spring chicken, but uh, I, I feel a renewed sense of vigor and uh, determination. Uh, I plan on winning every game I play, A. B, uh, the GM title's right around the corner. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm a little... Uh, I'm a little pressed in other personal matters, but that's, of course, beyond the scope of this interview. So uh, it's hard for me to give you a direct and concrete answer. Just uh, take those elements and make what them of you will, what you will. That, that's the best I can answer. Well, I have, those are all the questions I have. Uh, I wanted to ask if you wanted to leave any closing comments for the Chess Drum audience. You have a lot of fans out there. Yeah, of course I do. and. Um, I want to say, firstly, that I, I felt the support from a distance, and I felt it uh, up close and personal with the, the letters and, and the emails that you sent to Chestrum. I, I felt it uh, in San Diego when I beat Akobion in the first round. I felt it since then. I felt it before. But now it's with a renewed sense of uh, palpability. I, I, I really do feel it, and I hate to be redundant, so... <laughs> I feel the palpability of it all. And so um, I can only hope that it continues in the future and I hope that uh, for our younger students and uh, our aspiring players that they will study my play and, and emulate uh, my style when they can, when it's possible. And I hope that, uh, that I'll have a lasting influence. I, I, I understand that I'm creating a, a legacy per se and I'm, I'm very aware of that. And it, there's never a time when I play that I'm not aware of that. I, I don't play, let's say, for fun anymore. I'm a strict professional, and uh, my standards are only going to get higher and higher. So I just want to tell the, uh, the chess drum audience that whatever the future may bring, uh, I think that uh, no one will be disappointed. Well, on that note, we'll end the interview, and I'd like to thank you, Emery, and uh, all the best for the, in the future. Super. Let's go get him. Okay. This is Daim Shabazz. We're signing.